All right, shitty neighbors. Shitty neighbors. Oh, jeez. Hey, Billy Big Screen, I'm reaching out to you as someone who has a bit of a neighbor problem and have a landlord problem. So a young couple moved into the apartment complex. Let me read that again. I'm reaching out to you as someone who's had a bit of a neighbor problem and a landlord problem. Oh, brother. Your landlord's not helping you with your neighbor or they're both assholes in their own worlds? Oh, boy. Here we go. So a young couple moved into the apartment complex that my wife and I have lived in, lived at for six years, and they have a bit of a shitbox car collecting problem. Our lot has enough spots for two cars per room, eight rooms in the complex, so that means there's 16 spots. Don't worry, Bill. I'm coming to you for advice. The least I can do is not make you do math. <laughs> it's kind of scary how well you guys know me at this point. Um, anyways, it even, it even says in the lease that you can only have two, but the property has undergone new management and the newbies aren't nearly as hands-on with the towing cars for being ran, run down pieces of shit. Uh, they had three and one of them was broken down for three months before I put a note on there asking if they can move it or fix it to which they replied by putting three sheets of paper with red writing on them on the inside of their windshield. They read, we live here, the car runs, mind your own business. Ah, yes. Yeah, the ignorant. Part of being ignorant is you have no empathy, which leads to anywhere from being an asshole to joining a hate group. Uh, Now I have walked past this car with these sheets of paper on the windshield for over two months and even asked the maintenance guy to help me out citing the lease. He basically told me that because of the toothless nature of the owners, his hands are tied. Now, as I'm writing to you, I found out this evening that these people went out and got a nice car and parked it in the lot also. I thought of a lot of things, including putting painter's tape on the hood in the shape of a dick with a note on it that says, next time it'll be spray paint, Move the fucking car. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now you, you live in that world. Uh, but I just can't do it. Yeah, don't do it. Do I find my zen and just deal with walking past all these fucking cars every morning with my tail between my legs? Or do I confront these people and hope for results? I'm not a kind of confrontational person. Yeah, that's why you were going to, like, fuck with their car. That's what a non-confrontational person does. Dude, if you're not going to go over there and just beat the shit out of which you shouldn't do because you're either going to lose or you're going to get sued. Um, or you could lose and get sued. There's no winning. If you're a fully functioning adult like, and you actually have done something with your life, you, 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 like, fighting is not an option past like high school. Uh, I'm not a confrontational person unless you have to, okay? But due to some events that have happened in my life over the past year, I'm worried that I'll start to see red if I, they don't agree with my request and say some stuff that I can't take back and will make seeing them in the future a bit awkward. Thanks for the help, Bill, and good job on the movie. I can't wait to see it. Um, the way I see it, you got, you got three options here. You, you just deal with it, you move, or save up money and buy a house. Those are your options. But if the landlord isn't going to do anything, um, I can tell you this. When you move out and the next people look at your place and they see 20 junkers or whatever sitting out there, that's going to fuck with their world. Um, I guess you could also lawyer up and deal with that and just say it says here in the lease I have to deal with this. As long as the cars aren't in your way, um, you know, there's another thing. You could actually talk to him and just say, listen, I'm sorry. I was in a bad mood. I actually like the car. And just talk to him about cars and shit like that. And maybe you can just make friends with the person. But uh, Or you can use it as motivation to get the fuck out of there and get, you know, Get something else going where people like that aren't in your life. But then what happens is you end up buying a house. If you buy a house, what I would suggest is uh, do a number of drive-bys. Like if you look at it during the week or on a weekend, sometimes like they strategically show the house when whatever loud, annoying thing that might be happening isn't happening in like the neighborhood or whatever and um 
you know, I mean, I would be as bold. I, I mean, I wouldn't be as bold. I wish I was to knock on the door of a neighbor and just be like, hey, how do you like the neighborhood? Is there anybody here that's just a ma- Is the person on the other side a major pain in the ass? Blah, 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 blah. No. Before you know, you knock on the door, the pain in the ass. Um, yeah, I'm sorry you're going through that, dude. That's the fucking worst. But um, I guess there's another thing. If the car runs, you could steal it. <laughs> but everybody has cameras now. That's another reason. <coughs> um, yeah, don't get involved. Like, Revenge is a, uh, that's one of the darkest of all human emotions. And uh, that's just not, even when somebody deserves it, I just avoid it and just, I avoid it. I just like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to keep living my life, keep being successful at what I want to do, whatever the fuck that is.